This is the Gore Club Podcast with Steve Vessel, Derek Sturgeon, and Death Metal Dave. Well, yeah, yeah. Welcome to the Gore Club Podcast, everybody. Sound check. Uh, oh, yeah, we're yeah. on. Yeah, yeah we are. The on fuck there. Happened? We were busy yeah. messing with technical difficulties. Technical difficulties, and you talking about fucking Superman movies? No, so. no, not at all. Uh, I'm Steve Vessel. <sighs> Death Metal Dave. I'm Derek. <laughs> we're not going to talk about The Man of Steel. We're not. Or Kevin Costner. In I can't field. do it. Or Kevin Costner in a field. Yeah. yeah, he did get shot. I forgot about that. Yeah, he gets shot. Yeah. Clint Eastwood. I don't know what's called. Perfect World. Is, is it? Oh, is it, yeah, yeah. No, yeah perfect no, world, right? Something like that, yeah. God, a, I don't care. Yeah, yeah, I know what you're talking about. We're here, we're, so today we're, we're doing Kevin Costner movies. No, we're going to talk about sweaty dude jack-off movies. Kevin Costner movies. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think the bodyguard is, Steve? Sassy. What sexy. do you think Waterworld is? Uh, Road Warrior on water, and I like it. I know you do. Yeah. Oh, fuck. No, we're <laughs> talking about the sword and sorcery genre. Yeah, that, that's a, it's a long and a beautiful, uh, eh. uh, uh, well, not sometimes beautiful, there's not okay. Anyways, they're good. Not some a fan. Of, some no. of them were great. No shit. <laughs> let's yeah, just right, start right right off the bat. Let's just start off right off the bat. I'm okay, not a big fan they, of these, so people are gonna get real fucking mad at me. I've got uh, some bullshit. Okay, they tend to focus on single hero romance and magic. That but, that is true, but basically, it's like uh, Dungeons and Dragons. A lot of them, especially when you get to the '80s, are like Dungeons and Dragons games with just. That were written bad. Yeah. 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 I mean, the 80s were like hard for this stuff. It was all about sweaty dudes in the 80s. It's a time of Hulkamania, hair metal, and uh, a sword yeah. and sorcery. The wet look. It's all about like being a tan, like hot dog colored, and wearing crotch pieces. I like that. I mean, it's I don't know. Well, yeah. We, I, you know what? Orange I do clothes. like that. Yeah. Well, let's start let's start back a little bit. You know, you, you got the 60s where you had the 60s. The, well, yeah, I've got the Sinbad movies yeah, up there, Dave. The, the Sinbad movies, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you do. Well, those are a lot of the ones. Sinbad, you know, uh, you've got Jason the Argonauts and the Voyage. Uh, oh, that was well, that the was 70s. the seventies. The seventies, yeah. like more of the seventh, uh, seventh Voyage of Sinbad. Sinbad. The, the, the Hercules with Steve Reeves and all those kind of things. That 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 kind of you know started it. But, those are uh, so fucking cheesy. Yeah, the seventies is when people had more money. Harry Housing kicked in. Yes, he's like, hey, I got uh, these skeletons in my garage let's 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 make an army of darkness before army of darkness Jason oh is that it was that, was that his exact words <laughs> yeah, oh god yes. i have so much money that i'm also a fucking time traveler let's <laughs> make army of darkness before army of darkness i call it evil dead three but in the, in the future they're going to call it army of darkness same level Steve's of special effects like it. yeah <laughs> it is it's about the same oh it's it is not purpose. much change it's well, funny yeah. we went from the beginning all the way almost to the end in, in the 90s <laughs> and yeah and we did done. it and we're done <laughs> see ya back to kevin costner so, Waterworld. <laughs> that is a totally different genre. <laughs> uh, so, okay, the 70s. Robin Hood. Fuck you. Oh, my God. Well, There's no accidents. We'll yeah, get to that, too. The, but in the 60s, you had a few movies. But the 70s is where it really starts to kick off. And that's where a lot of people will think of sword and sorcery movies come from. You like, so, in the 70s? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You oh, had, like, that's when all the stop motion started coming I get in. it, yeah. yeah. We, you know, we had color, color TVs. Color TVs. Yeah, we had yeah. Sinbad, the, the Sinbad movies. And like you were saying. Not with, that Sinbad. With. <laughs> ah, damn it! The <laughs> genie? Yes, <laughs> about the genie. The, the fuck. Um, <laughs> but what I want to talk about specifically that's in there was the Wizards, the cartoon, the yeah. Ralph Bashi. Bashi is it back? It's a cartoon Bakshi. called The Wizards. Bakshi. It's just called Wizards. Wizards. It's just uh, called Wizards. Washington. No, oh, fuck. no, it has nothing to do with the uh, basketball team. All right. That <laughs> <laughs> was an animated film in his style of animation. Rotoscoping. He, he took a whole, uh, yeah, a whole other level. What does that mean? Uh, it's it, it's an easier way to do complicated animated films where you will film us talking and being yeah. assholes, and then we'll draw over us and sell animation because it's easier for them. They'll have like a structure instead of like a stick thing. So like that the, Aha music video? G- no, but uh, <laughs> I mean, actually, sort of. He's, no, actual. Fuck, he's right. <laughs> Yeah, Shit. see, I am uh, right. Yeah, you, you're correct. It is that way. He did that, and he also did Lord of the Rings the same he, way. He did Lord of the Rings. Lord of the Rings was very upsetting, though, because it was supposed to be two movies, and they just made one. Yeah. So you get half well, the story. Well, they really fucking you paid us back later on, didn't they? Because now we got 55 Lord of the Rings movies, uh, we'll, and we'll then we got about, extended cuts. We'll talk about that. Someday. I don't want to. But Wizards was, uh, you know, it's a fantasy movie. It's it's groundbreaking. It's, yeah, and super. It's, it's got a lot of lot of uh, technology in it, and so this isn't a series. This is just a movie. This is just a, right. just a movie. Just a movie. And Ralph Bakshi changed animation because he wanted to make adult animated films for you know adults. Yeah. So there's violence and there's sex and 
you know, the good language. Stuff. Yeah. And, yeah. No, and nobody wanted to back that. And it started like with Fritz the Cat and all that kind of stuff. We want to get back into his backstory. But Wizards, Lord of the Rings, uh, is definitely that, that those are the staples of the 70s. But they weren't even that sweaty. Right. No, <laughs> no they're not very sweaty. I don't even remember half of these. I mean, I, I watched like Sinbad as a kid. Those used to come on like an AMC and shit like that. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, they would always come on. I wasn't really fond of any of these. I don't even know what Warlords of Atlantis is. That was but kind it's a of cool a, ass name. Yeah, that sounds like, like a WWE tag team in the eighties. <laughs> it's a great movie, and it was the beginning of what we're getting ready to get into, which is sweaty, uh, you know, yeah, uh, these obnoxious, teams. fucking horrible, sexy films. women. But they're they they have hunky their dudes. They have their charm, I guess. Swords. No Magic. hunky dudes. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. Sexy women and like chuds. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Did you watch Hawk the Slayer? Oh, I don't God. know. But Speaking this, of the 80s. Conan was definitely before Arnold had the money to fix, fix that fucking gap in his teeth. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's distracting. And it's funny because a lot of people will say that Conan is the, is the beginning of the sword and sorcery movement. It's what not year is Hawk that? Like 81? 82? 82. Yeah, and Hawk the Slayer is the first one that made money and made that whole genre like relevant to people. That, I wish I would have watched that money. one. That sounds cool. Oh, Hawk it's, the it's, Slayer. It's it's amazing because there's an elf in that movie and he just shoots arrows just just a million at a time. Yeah, you've got it's, him and you've got the guy who who has the crossbow that can shoot a million arrows. So they take they take out 140 people get killed in that movie. That's the body count. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it just like, like in rapid kills. succession. Yeah, it's it's like a machine fun. gun. Yeah. What what's the story? Are they are they fighting over a girl in this one, or are they fighting over someone's parents are killed, yeah, or is it money? This? You want me to do this? You go ahead. Okay, so Hawk is has a brother. Animal? Yeah, no. <sighs> God damn it, <laughs> Animal Hawk. No, it's Jack Palance, and I forgot the goddamn names. His name, but uh, uh, it's funny. I was not prepared for that one. <laughs> Jack Palance is is the main villain. He's it's almost like Darth Vader. He's, there's Voltan. the force. Yeah, it's that's it. Thank you. Hawk's evil. They're brother. both in love with the same woman, not and then course. yeah, Jack Palance kills her by accident, and Hawk never forgives him. And then of course. Jack Palance's character never forgives Hawk for taking his woman and it wasn't his. It's ridiculous. And then so, they, yeah, it's always a woman. There's an gold. epic story. All these are always women in gold, which is funny because we're also watching the Leprechaun movies for our next episode, and all Leprechaun is is women in gold. It's all the same shit. That's beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> I was just like, these all have the same stories. They, they all basically do, but uh, Patricia Quinn was in this one. Oh, she that's cool. She, yeah, it was one of her roles besides Rocky Horror yeah. and Shock Treatment. Is this as violent? I actually made notes. I'm going to find them. Is this as violent and as gross as like the ones that come out later? No, no, it's no, not. It's the it's, beginning. Yeah, it's so it, this is pretty tame. There, there's violence, but there's no blood. It's one of those. Well, it's where arrows. Like, arrows you are always. You like, stab Pew! somebody, and you know they pull their sword out, and there's yeah. no blood on it at all. And it, I'd like to say in this time too, if you're like a gamer, every other Nintendo game had like wizards and shit on it. This is like the time of Gauntlet and Golden Axe D &D. arcade machines and D &D, all that. D&D, man. So it was just like you couldn't get away from this stuff. This, I mean, this it was, was blowing outlet. up everywhere. Yeah, this was an outlet for people that were that were into Dungeons and Dragons yeah. that didn't have representation on film of what they what they wanted and that's this was the response to that because you know, in the 70s you had the whole like satanic panic like we talked about before and um, different you, episode. You didn't you didn't have films with dragons and you know it's not like it is today where you've got lord of the rings and game of thrones and it's all these nothing you can all find. these other big yeah. series and you go back and watch these and you think oh my god this is so shitty but at the time it, it was, was so amazing yeah i love this fucking movie hawk the slayer was a big deal to me yeah it had all of, like you had the hunchback you had the elf you had the giant it was the same giant in the crawl uh there's you have the whole like gamut of people that you want like oh these are my heroes and we're gonna go save the town it's actually i think it's a nunnery and they they owe them money and it's all bullshit he just wants to kill everybody jack palance that's, no, that's a good time though yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's what i do like about these movies the all the murder yeah, there's a lot of it. There's a whole, there's a whole lot, lot of violence. There's not a lot I like about them, but the murder part. Yeah, thumbs fucking up, guys. <laughs> um, we have Clash of the Titans. You have Excalibur, Dragon Slayer, Heavy Metal. These are all fucking. Fantastic. Excalibur was my uh, high school English teacher's favorite movie, so we watched it twice every year because I had him sophomore and junior year. And Did it sophomore. ruin you? No, it actually made me like okay, it. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> because like all the awesome. pe all the people I didn't get along with like talked through it and hated it just because what it was and I was like oh this is fucking good it's a really and long I, and movie I bought too. the and I bought the really shitty DVD it's back when it has like that almost like paper cardboard cover that falls under like the black clip yeah yeah I don't recommend buying those those are dog shit but <laughs> I did have that. Well, Excalibur uh, was so epic as and long as Dave says it's a long movie yeah it's but a it's, long it's, movie. you know what's funny is there the 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 witches. 
or the the spell that now is so famous now all of a sudden is originates from that film, the Anal Nathrak that you hear everywhere. Anal Nathrak, Uthbez, you know, you don't hear that? Okay, I guess I'm the only Who the fuck are you hanging with? <laughs> Nerd. What do you do in your free time? But at the time, nobody even knew what the hell. It's like saying, you know, uh, uh, Katu, Verat, and Nikto. Nobody knows what the fuck that is until Army Darkness and Evil Dead. You're like, oh, okay. But yeah. if you're... Uh, if you're a sci-fi nerd, you know what I'm talking about. It's the same thing with that film, Clash of the Titans, Excalibur. All these little odes are now big. It's beautiful. Nerds. Yeah, I mean, Nerds. <laughs> that same year, Dragon Slayer came God, out. God, that's an epic I, fucking movie. And that one was epic because you got to see a big fucking dragon. Same guys. Was it John Dextra? I think he did that. I can't remember. These are dad movies. All these are just dad movies. <laughs> they probably were. <laughs> My dad didn't that's watch them. That's why I saw these. I didn't have a dad, so I didn't see these as much. Aww. But I remember going to friends' houses, and th- these are like always the movies, the VHSs you would see them rent, or like Dragon Slayer, Excalibur. Heavy metal was super popular, but I don't think I don't know how heavy metal fits into this as much. Uh, heavy metal, I mean, it's got it's, fantasy elements, but it's, it's, it's yeah. mu- just as much as Wizards does. It spawns from a male magazine, a comic, you know, yeah. magazine. So it's male fantasy jerk off, perfect. And then yeah, you have yeah. this movie, and I think the only thing that's really like, like that in that in heavy metal is the story den. Uh, you know, it's like the John Candy voice character where he's a nerd, wakes up, and he's got a you know a raging heart on and muscles, and he saves the women, and then he has to fight the mutants, and that's that's the only part of that whole fucking movie that really is. It's like Jumanji. Sword and yeah. <laughs> Fuck, man. <laughs> Are you talking about Jumanji again? No, no we're not. Uh, let's jump. There's so much to talk about. Let's talk about Beast Master. Beast fucking Master. Beast Master. Okay, so if you've seen Conan, Beast Master is just not good. Because it's like Mark Singer is like the wish version of Arnold Schwarzenegger. Like he's got like half the muscle mass. He looks like a total chud. Yeah, like he no. doesn't look like he can read. Dark. He doesn't look like he, he can plays read the at character. All. No. He doesn't Dark. have to read. He can talk to fucking animals. Yeah, they can read for know. him. He was so good. They made what three of them, four of them. Well, it's a fucking like, TV show. <laughs> it's, three seasons. His parents get killed by like there's like these witches all dancing around when it starts, and they they pour like blue jizz all over his parents while they're asleep. Yeah, Rip Torm needs the baby. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Torin gets what he Why wants. Why the fuck do you want that baby? Uh, it's a, bec- because the baby was destined to kill him or something. It's a prophecy, man. It's the sa- Jesus. same thing in all of these movies. There's a prophecy. Yeah, and, and then accidentally created. Yeah, then, exactly. <laughs> that fucking dude that <laughs> looks should have like, put that on there. The dude Romance, that's not magic Reggie. And prophecy. Like, there's a guy that's not Reggie Bannister, but he looks just like Reggie Bannister. Saves the fucking baby. Yeah. And I'm like, was Reggie Bannister busy so Don <laughs> could get a hold of him? Well, that's what's funny because it is Don Cascarella who's who directed yeah. this. And yeah. that fucking dude looks a lot like Reggie yeah, Bannister. Yeah, he does. And I've never put that together. God damn it. And Eric. it bugs me that's so gold. much because I was just like, that has to be Reggie Bannister. Then I looked it up and I was just like, well. And like these dudes show up and like the whole village just gets fucked up. Like they all get their ass kicked. Yeah. Like nobody trains in this village. Nobody lives. No, nobody does. What There's, do you what do you do Nobody for fun? lives. Like what do you do for fun then? <laughs> yeah, you're obviously farmers. You have There's, There's no fucking I mean, video games. Yeah. There's nothing to do for fun They're because not reading. The, the lifespan was like 30. You don't <laughs> well, get to have so fun. So by the time you're 12, you should be a badass. The lifespan was 30 because they let little motherfuckers come in their villages and beat the shit out of all of them. <laughs> maybe, maybe, did you think about this? Maybe they were just so busy rebuilding their village because they, it kept getting time, burned down. They all oh, look it's like, like Tulsa Doom trained everybody how to fucking wipe out villages. If you ever play like Baldur's Gate or any, they, they look like the NPCs from the start of the game that are just wearing fucking cloth and shit. Yeah. Like when you first get your armor and they're like, here's a brown sack, a rat can kill you. That's what everybody <laughs> in that fucking village looks like like and i'm like okay good it's, for you it's, guys it's awful they do get wiped out it's uh, and the darg has to take revenge and you know he's got a mission now it might take him 30 years to get that mission but you know actually it's like a, a year yeah i didn't well it, didn't most take stories that it takes long. a lifetime but he gets a shit but he gets really he gets he gets animals because he he's saved well he's saved by a dog well no no the the bear the bear attacks when he when he's a kid, yeah, oh, and, and Reggie Bannister saves him. Actually, he saves Reggie Bannister. Yes, yeah, he does. The kid he, from Cujo. He does like the crocodile Dundee yeah, thing, yeah. but uh, the crocodile Dundee. If, if you, you watch it on YouTube, <laughs> Dave did it. If if you watch <laughs> if you watch the uh, there's a new version of it, like I mentioned before, it came out from Vinegar Syndrome. They've got a commentary. And they talk oh, about right, yeah. They talk about it. Yeah. That bear fucked the trainer up. Like, oh, that's and that, scene, that makes me feel safe that, on the set. That that bear came out, and they're like, "All right, cut." And the trainer went to go stop the bear, and the bear just fucked him up. So everybody ran to their fucking cars. Good, 
I would be too. I wish the bear would have fucked up this whole movie. Oh man! Uh, it, but there's a lot of you fun. spent fifty dollars on this movie, so you're gonna justify. No, it like I got it on the Black Friday sale. Only Forty-five dollars, thirty bucks on it, well, and it was totally worth it. Who just pa- so who passed away? Didn't pass away, and then she finally did pass away from this movie. Tony Roberts. Yes, that was the funny thing that happened. That's how last I felt year. watching this. I, <laughs> Darren's like, oh, I just want to die. Dude, when he becomes an adult, there's like a fucking five minute scene of him just standing on a mountain waving his fucking sword around. Yeah, like that feels like it goes on for an. Eternity, and I can't remember. They're did Conan like, come out before this or not? No, no, because the same thing. They're well, very August, close. They were together. very close. So let's see. It's the same year. This was August, and Conan came out. The thing about oh, Don Conan Car- came out. Conan came out in March. Okay, yeah. The thing about Don Carrasco, it's the same with Star Wars. He has an idea. Nerds have ideas, and they share yeah. them. It's like he's got Jawas, and he's got dwarves. He's got a sword swinging part. He said, "Let's make a, a two-hour ferret commercial." <laughs> oh my God, Pudo and Kodo. Yeah. And then yeah. the it was the the tiger that's painted black. Obviously. Yes, it is. It's, it's obviously so a obviously. tiger. It's not a panther. It's a tiger. It's nice. fucking painted black. You see, you can see the stripes. It's it's great. Like, why are you trying to get me to like ferrets? That's what I don't understand. I, don't I know. didn't know what a ferret was until I saw this movie. Maybe. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Maybe. And I, they were handy. Fuck. Maybe. Big, are they? Big, yeah. A big company. They still bikinis. Them. I don't know. Did, does, is there a commentary track about how they trained the ferrets? No, they already trained. I don't know. Trained ferrets just showed up on they the fucking... The never, bear killed somebody, so they just said, fuck it, we'll find some trained ferrets. And how's the Already. bird... There's a scene in this movie where a bird like scoops up a child yeah. and carries it. It's impossible. How yeah. the fuck does it do that? I know. It wasn't actually a child. It was probably It was a Monty Python a fucking swallow. <laughs> oh, I'm sure it was just like a fucking <laughs> stuffed pillow, but the, it just doesn't make any sense. They just wrapped it, a rabbit in a blanket yeah. and we're like, here... I mean, these movies seem like they're trying to be like grounded in some form of reality, even though it's all wizards and shit. Eh, but yeah, sort of. Sort I of. mean, enough to where a bird shouldn't be picking up a fucking child. Magic. Magic. It's sorcery. Oh, yeah, it's sorcery. It's the sorcery. That's the sorcery part. But uh, he, he, he gets his powers because he is the chosen one. Yeah, he is the chosen they one. They don't explain. No. I don't think they explain that at no, all. No, the fuck that. It's, you don't explain shit in these movies. He talks to animals. It's true. He's fucking Dr. Doolittle in underwear. <laughs> God damn it. Buff With Doolittle. Sword. That's well, what happened. Somebody fucking watched Doctor Doolittle, like the old one. They're like, you know what, make this cooler: swords and underwear. I am down and nudity and nudity, a lot of nudity, and the violence is fantastic. Uh, the effects are actually really good. Um, I love the main, like not the main villain, Rip, is Riptor, but like his henchman looks like War Duke from like D and D when I was a kid. So I, I was totally in on this fucking movie. I could see that. I mean, I, I liked this movie when I was young, but when I revisit it, I. Just can't do it. And there yeah, was always that happened a lot this this week with re a lot. There was of always movies. the yeah. joke about uh, Beastmaster because it was always on HBO. So HBO standing it for hey Beastmaster's on. Yeah, but which one? They made a TV the, movie too. The first one was Jeez. always on HBO. Yeah. yeah. Well, there was a series too, right? Then they There's did like in the nineties they did like the Beastmaster oh. fucking series, which wasn't good. And it was better than the sequels, which yeah. I don't know what that says. But the guy looks like the friggin' uh, guy who used to play Aragorn, but he got fired from Lord of the Rings. Since we're on this fucking subject. Uh, I know who you're talking Townsend, about. Townsend, whatever his yeah. name, Stuart Townsend. He was the original Aragorn before uh, Viggo Mortensen, and they filmed half the movie with Lord of the Rings, and then they fired it. But this guy looks just like him in the TV show for. Beastmaster. See, it all comes from Sorcerer. The fight Full scenes circle. are fun. The fights are fun in these movies. The the right. stories don't make any fucking sense because it's always just like revenge, money, women. Either one. And they yeah. treat women like shit, so I don't even know why they're fighting yeah, over women. We haven't gotten to like, those movies yet. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, these get like super creepy and rapey. Like, it's kind of gross. Yeah. Especially when it's like the heroes doing it. Mm. Like, yeah. Which happens like later on when we talk about a few no, movies let's later. Let's do it now. We can move on right on to oh, Conan. Wait. You're going right. Uh, I wasn't even thinking Conan. You're like Deathstalker. Yeah. Uh, go straight to fucking Deathstalker. But we yeah. can talk about Conan for a yeah, second. Yeah, we'll get we'll get the Deathstalker. So Conan, Conan. 1982. Conan, the, the other one that came out yeah. in '82. Yeah, he so, doesn't give a fuck about women. The best part is, is like <laughs> until so, one puts him in his place. My favorite thing while rewatching this is when James Earl Jones shows up the first time. He's got his goth girl haircut. Yeah, it's like the Bruce Dickinson like, goth girl. Every fucking goth chick has his hair cut <laughs> now. Bangs. It's just James Earl, James Earl Jones just can't wait to Holy fucking go shit. home and blog after he kills some He's got a whole Betty fucking bangs. village. God damn it, Derek. I hate when you're changing my perspective on this shit. Yeah, dude, when you it. watch it, it's so hard to take him seriously. Uh, dude. But he had, like once again, they just show up and they just fuck up a whole village. And it's just nothing. And like my favorite thing though is like Conan's like holding his mom, little this little baby's like, oh, he's not gonna kill my mom. And then like James Earl Jones just jukes him for no reason. There is no reason to do that. Just turn around, like, oh, she gets to live. Gotcha. Yeah. And then they still he the pulled kid. John Jones on her head, dude. This is what I want to know. <laughs> he swung around backwards and. What the fuck is he pushing his whole life? Because he's just pushing the circular thing. The pain of uh, the wheel of pain. I think that's what's going on. Yeah. What's what's the point of doing that forever? There is no point. Muscles, motherfucker. If I muscles. Yeah. If I kidnap you. 
and you don't like me, why would I do something to go, hey, you should train to be stronger so you could fuck me up when you become an adult? And they're obviously feeding him well. They are feeding yeah. him. That dude's got a lot of protein. Yeah. He doesn't look like fucking skinny ass Beastmaster. As a kid, I always wanted to know what the fuck that wheel is for. I think it's for grain, and it doesn't matter. Yeah, because they don't really matter. explain it. They just show him pushing it it's for a like great- a. Dun. Fucking couple minutes, like that slow music's playing, dun, and it's just dun. like, yeah, and that I fucking do, soundtrack. By the way, holy shit, I do overall like this movie more than Beastmaster for sure. But I think a lot of people are probably in that camp. I, I equally love both of them. Yeah, written by Oliver Stone, directed by John Milius. Uh, it was taken seriously. They took all the fantasy and the mutants out. They were actually in the original script. Yeah, and he just made a hardcore fucking sword and sorcery movie that never been done before, and based off a comic book. So that's awesome. Yeah, I mean, I'm a big fan of like Frank Frazetta and his art and shit. So yeah, that's always been like a big thing for me. I even had that from Dust Till Dawn, you know, art that he did. I don't know. I don't know why he did that, by the way. It's fucking. I don't amazing, even know why though. it exists, but yeah. like, I think Robert Rodriguez is just a fan. Maybe he contacted him before, like you know. Yeah. it's like Guillermo saying, "Hey, uh, can you do me but, a poster that's never going to be released?" Probably. Yeah. But no, the Conan is actually. I mean, Arnold never fucking talks, which was smart because I don't even know if he even knew English at this point. They cut a lot of his lines out. Yeah, probably. No, they did. Probably, I got yeah. an uncut version, and they cut a whole lot of his lines out. And uncut version, it's like a, a yeah. what do you call it, a rough mix. And it, boy, it's not good. Yeah, yeah. And I don't care how fucking horny you are. If you go in a fucking cave full of skeletons and shit, <laughs> and some chick shows up, yeah. you're probably not going to be like, hey, let's have sex. Like, how long has it been since you got your dick touched? Hey, man, and you're it's like, hey, Imagine how that cave smells. <laughs> Just smell that cave. Imagine how people smelled in these movies. In general? I think yeah. about that a lot. Like, but like, all the hair and yeah. the sweat and the, and the giant juices and the dicks and oh, yeah. and Oh, man. Yeah, it's gross. But see, to them, it's just normal. You just take off the scab and keep going. I just like that mid-fucking. Uh, she just uh, goes full like full witch on him, and he just throws that bitch in the fire. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> He's just like, oh. <laughs> and just right in the fire. And then I'm like, just, just turn it into something, man. I was just like, man, I can't tell you how many times I fucking wanted to do that. <laughs> <laughs> do you have a fireplace? Because don't listen to this podcast, yeah. anybody. Yeah, you're like, that's a good idea. If we get in a fight midway through, I'll just fucking throw her in a fire. <laughs> just buck her off straight into the fire. It's, oh. And then the... The other scene I really liked is James yeah. Earl Jones, just to prove his power, just makes that girl kill herself for no reason. Yeah. Come he's to like, me, my child. He's like, watch this. Come to me, my child. And she's like, yeah, sure. And I'm like, know. why would you do that? Like, surely there was, like, steps to get up there. So he just be like, <laughs> all right, I'm going to go down I'll the I'll be right step. down. Yeah. Maybe he was just culling the weak. Like, this one's dumb. Let's see what happens. Holy shit. Come he to had me, own, my child. She's on standby, dumb. Like, they're in a row. Can you imagine if, like, you're in your house? Say you live in a two-story house, and you see your kid on the balcony, and you're like, hey, get down here now. And they're like, okay. And they just fucking face dive into the ground. <laughs> like, what the fuck? Not well, mine. You would have failed as a parent then. Yeah. Yeah, you're like, fuck, man. I sh- yeah. What about the, uh, drink so much that's what becomes your son is it? my son. The uh, the uh, the cannibal orgy. <laughs> oh, I love that. The, the scenes in this movie are really extreme, especially for the time and and the budget. And they it's, it's a major release film. And then he just turns into a big snake monster. He which does doesn't make turn, any sense. Yeah, and he also sh- I don't care. shoots a snake through a bow and arrow. Yeah. How do you do that? Sorcery. Magic. Sorcery. The snake Sorcery. stays straight Sorcery. all the way through. Man, <laughs> could you imagine if you're that snake? And he just says, seek. <laughs> Flying through the fucking air. Yeah. I know, man. He's like, ah! Yeah, like, how, how's your life going to end? Well, James Earl Jones with his goth bangs is going to put me in a fucking bow. Right. And then shoot me at someone that's on a horse. He, he, he gets blocked by the shield at one time. It's just dong, and it's just a big hard on. On a shield. Big snake get, hard on. He gets his fucking head cut off. Uh, Poor James wah, Earl Jones. Wah, wah. Spoiler. Um, but uh, if you haven't you know. seen Conan by now. Oh, yeah, I guess we should skip on because there's so many yeah. wars. The Conan's fucking legendary. Well, it's hard not to stay on the ones that like, yeah, are the that more are, meaningful, you know? Yeah, but, because, yeah. I mean, you get to things like Sword and the Sorcerer, uh, Sorceress, Conquest. Those are going to be ones that are less known. Like, I've seen Sword and Sorcerer. Uh, Love it. I Richard have, Mall. I have not seen Conquest. Oh, yeah, that's, a, not, that's not another Italian film. I think it's made by the same guy who made Hawk the Slayer, I believe. Could Sword and Sorcerer is the one like that. The villain that shows up at first is like very Freddy Krueger at first, right? Yeah. Oh, it's it's talking about graphic, like yeah. Sword and Sorcerer. Movie. And he yeah. just shows up and just murders that fucking witch. Yeah, you know, sometimes no you reason. Be- he's just like, "Hey, I'm here, bye." I'm more of a witch than you, and I have to take your heart. Yeah, he's just like, "Hey, watch, I can do this. I'll show you my power." I'm like, "You didn't have to do that." Like, it he- looks like a Cornish hen. He pulls out of her yeah. fucking chest. There's <laughs> so many ways to show your power, but in these days, it's like, "Hey, let's just murder." Oh. And Conquest is Lucio Fulci. Oh, fuck me. Sword of Sorcery is the one, the dumbest fucking sword in history. The three blade, like, bullshit sword. I love that sword. When you say dumb, you mean great, right? No, it's fucking stupid. There's no, it's not practical, guys. We're not going to talk about Highlander, but I got a Highlander sword. (laughs) 
Yeah. See, that's practical, though. You can kill a motherfucker with that. <laughs> and it's rusty as fuck. <laughs> Your three-blade sword, what the fuck are you going to do with that? Stab three people at once? You're not going to do that. Eh, it, could, it could have, like, the, 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 the fucking... The worlds will align one day, and that dude will just be like, eh. Just I just hate it. Imagine how heavy that fucking thing would be. And it comes to the end, and he's getting right. You have, you have the chance to use it properly. Yeah, he doesn't. And you fucking waste the shot. Yeah. They fuck there's like, wait for the sequel. It's, then... like you get, it's like you missed the porn star, and you fucking hit the wall. What are you doing? What the f- oh, this is the one. I had, a, I had a note here about it that I had to remember. <laughs> I, I didn't watch it recently, but there's something that's always bugged me about it. That girl is getting raped. And he shows up and waits till he finishes eating his chicken leg to save her. Yeah. This is the hero of the movie. And he's just casually watching this happen. Like, oh, this is silly. Well, there are like, no it's heroes a fucking in these movies. They're double all awful people. Gum commercial. Like, haha, he almost got gotcha. you. I don't know if that's like, they're, are they trying to be realistic? Being like, men don't really care about women unless they have to. But why would he save her at all then? They, that's the weird thing about he it. Is like, he lets it get like really close to being like a real bad situation for her. And then he's like, well, good good thing I finished this chicken leg. After the leg was done, he was like, I'm kind of horny. It's so weird to watch though, because he just kind of just stands there casually. Oh, he's a eating, scumbag. Well, that's like, the be- that's like the beginning of Death Stalker. <laughs> right. That is absolutely the beginning of Death Stalker. Like, the same thing. Creepy. Mongoloid bad masked people are chasing <laughs> are chasing cool. a lady and a dude and they catch her and they're gonna rape her and like the yeah. fucking hero is just like leaning up against his hut like hey yeah and what's weird about that is he saves her and then tries to have sex with her like right afterwards in Deathstalker it's like yeah. so I uh, just you just these these wanted to rape you these smelly goblins yeah I saved your life now I got you pushed against this wall and I'm like my turn now tricked you yeah and I was like this feels like I'm watching Oz oh god like, it, it reminds me of, like the prison show when Schillinger would like save somebody oh yeah but only for them to be his prison bitch yeah you can you can have the bottom bunk if it's you want it's totally what they do in this and Deathstalker's <laughs> fucking gross like that's one of them that I'm like this whole movie's just fucking nonstop like rape all I've, the time I've, uh, I've, I've played Dungeons and Dragons with a group of stoners that made more sense than death stalker it doesn't make any sense like he gets his quest from this like vague witch like yeah. this witch is just like i'm just gonna say words yeah and you fucking figure it out and then he just runs into like richard rooker and they're like hey let's go to the mortal Kombat tournament <laughs> <laughs> no richard no, remember, rooker remember he's, he's my he, favorite jason by the way he's, he's, he's great he's a go- he's a, uh, yeah they, they run into him but you forgot about the uh the the goblin in the in the cave when yeah, he fights the, the giant the, oh the, the, god how the weird ghoulie looking thing. Goblin Which, by the way, it's the same uh, special effects artist from Ghoulies. Yeah. That explains <laughs> John exactly Carl why. Yeah. And this is the same one where he brings that girl to the room to rape her, the hero of this movie, by the way. And then he like kicks her out of bed because he don't like her voice or some shit. He finds out like she's a witch. He's like, I was going to rape you, but I have morals. <laughs> you sound like a dude. You know, there, yeah. wasn't, there, there, was, there wasn't a fire close enough, I think. Yeah, there wasn't a fire. He had to just kick her out. He's like, where the fuck's the fire? Conan what, had a fire. The thing about these films that I never understood as a child and now as a adult, I see is like, are they, like, the way that people set up is like, if, if the world is a lawless, then men are just raping bastards. Yeah, there's no like moral and, code with and, it. Yeah. I don't think they're far off because, you know, people fucking suck. People suck, but and people dude, like me who want to defend the people would get killed. But my thing is, is like, you can't have the hero. Have there's no reason to have the hero do these things. Like, if you're if you're gonna have this heroic character, right. you don't. That scene's pointless. Like that opening scene where like he saves her. Cool. Why does he have to push her against the fucking wall and then have, try to have sex with her? Because they needed why, to fill time. Why does he try to? Well, rape, have to pay me back. Rape that other girl. Well, they could have been like, meanwhile over here, someone's actually getting raped. Like, yeah. You know, whatever. Do whatever you gotta do, but keep the hero like clean. Don't make me like have to cheer for this fucking guy who's obviously a piece of shit. Yeah. Because he, he kills fucking Richard Brooker. Like, there well, was, was Richard Brooker should have been the fucking but, hero. But exactly. he pretty much revealed the, But he revealed everything to him. Yeah. And then they were going to, like, not kill each other. Because Richard Brooker didn't fucking kill him. That's what I actually wrote down. Why couldn't Richard Brooker be this hero? And then he snaps his, like, <laughs> fucking neck. And he's like, goodbye, friend. Huh. Like, what a prick. Yeah. yeah. Everything about that movie was just so bad or the titty the titty out for no reason that girl whips her sword out to go fucking kill people and her tits just out of the room that's lana clarkson who was murdered by phil Spector. oh yeah shit yes the more you know yeah she should have did that some of the more that titty out sword shit she was an actress and i think that this was her empowerment role and i was like you're empowerment you you are you are in a cape and a g-string watch that scene she literally moves it over to have her tit out for the scene i mean that's how i would get killed that's actually a good distraction i was gonna say man steve titty bam dead i mean that works every time 
Dudes oh. can't do that. You whip your dick out. It's like, oh, it's gone. Fuck. I thought it was a good idea. But, but. And then you have like Uncle Fester tattooed Mike Tyson, bad guy. Exactly. And yes. <laughs> if you watch yeah. it, if you watch it, I swear, man, his tattoo switches sides. Oh, God. Does it? <laughs> and he sets in like that Shao Kahn throne, though. Yeah, yeah too. It he looks, looks like Quan Chi. It does. Yeah, 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 absolutely. And then they have the uh, the pig the, the pig guy. Yeah, I love the pig monsters. I like the, the pig, the, yeah. the cheap Gamorrean guards. <laughs> yeah, pretty pretty much. I mean, it's sort of depicted on the front of the, the uh, art, the cover art for the movie. Yeah, the, it is. The poster. They, the, it was so good they used it in the second one. The, yeah. fights in it, the fights in it are fun, though. I do like the battles and shit like that in yeah. Deathstalker. I just don't like the overall story because, for me, like I like anti-hero characters in like a Deadpool kind of way. Yeah, like Yojimbo or something. But not in like a, oh, you're, or Constantine or whatever, but not in like, a, oh, you're the biggest piece of shit in the world style. Like yeah. there's no because you're not going to be able to redeem this character in two hours. Not after yeah. the first fucking scene. I've yeah. got one note and it says, by the way, the guy wore a wig. That was on the IMBD. <laughs> I was like, they put an IMBD trivia thing telling me. I thought you keep a calling wig. it IMBD. IMDBD. IMDB. IMPTD. I don't know. LMPD baby. But you know, I just just well, I guess we'll talk about. Let's just talk about Deathstalker two to get it out of the way. Oh, it's a much better film. It is a much better film because it stopped taking itself serious. So he he's like the new actor is fun. It's he's less of a meathead. It's more humorous and he's witty. He doesn't rape. He was in. Uh, so, he was in uh, 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 shopping mall. Yeah, he's in shopping mall. He's actually dating uh, Monique Gabrielle, who's the main actress star of the dual roles. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if he got her the role or who got who what, but uh, yeah, it's actually one of my favorite movies with her in it. Directed by it Tom does Warnowski. not take itself serious. Yeah, it's one. It's Warnarski, who's a piece of crap. We've all kind of realized that. Yeah, now. recently. But shopping That's, mall. Yeah. Re- uh, Retur- uh, Return to Swamp Thing. Not a fan he's, of the man, but he's done a lot of cool shit. He's done some fun shit. Uh, it's got that. The whole soundtrack sounds like it was made on a Super Nintendo, and I really like that. Yes. 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 I, I, just, I love that for some reason. And just the way it opens, it all just sounds like. Like those, like once again, going back to all those wizard and sorcery games that were on like the 16 bit, 8 bit consoles. Like, I feel like I'm playing fucking Gauntlet when I listen to like the soundtrack on this yeah. shit. Boot, boot. And this was the last, uh, last sword and sorcery movie that Roger Corman produced. I bet in Argentina. They made this movie on the sets they that were getting yeah. torn down from the last movie yeah. that was made there, and they made it in like 14 days or something crazy like that. You can it tell because, like it was made because if you days. watch them back to back. Half of the scenes in this movie were in the first yeah, movie, including the her mud outfit. wrestling. The mud well, wrestling. The mud wrestling. There's I, wrestling in. I this. remember watching part two. And just, I'm just like, man, they really love their fucking mud wrestling in the these old days. They had nothing else to do. But that time <laughs> around, they did make it less rape because a dude doesn't jump in in this one. Like it does. Oh yeah. They made this one like this. Almost feels like it's a spoof of the first one in a it's way. So 80s. It doesn't take itself seriously. They have the Amazons, the wrestling match, the graveyard scene with the fucking zombies. Yeah, which is my favorite shitty scene in in any of these movies because he falls into like that death trap. He drops like what twenty feet or whatever, and there's like this spiked wall <laughs> coming at him so slow. And he's like, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? And when the spikes are about to hit him, he just grabs them and climbs up them. And yeah. I'm like, what a shitty fucking trap that he was able to climb up the trap. That's how slow it was coming. He climbed 20 feet up and just like, oh, there's a hole there. <laughs> I'll just I'll just move this out of the way and, and I'm out. Yeah. It lasts for so long because the, the whole zombie attack's happening, you know, yeah. on the outside. And he's just standing there like, oh, no. Oh, it's like the Zamboni no. scene in Deadpool. It's like, come on, dude, do come something. On. Yeah. And and you have to, you have it to, fits have to, for that low budget style of film. You have to give credit to Monique Gabrielle here. She did it. She did a really good job. She's great. She's she was funny. Great. Who is she? Jerk. She's she, the queen slash heroine. Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah. She played both of them. Mm. She was a she big was, squeak, she was the queen clone. back then. Yeah. She's in uh, Return of the Swamp Thing as well. She's in a lot of Wernowski films. Uh, this was her big role. Like, this is the one she still talks about, actually. So, what year is this movie supposed to take place in? Oh, did they ever say that, they, they, I don't they think they, they don't that? establish years. Were, were they because... building pro wrestling rings <laughs> <laughs> in, like, the fucking medieval times? Yeah. yeah. Well, I, made, I, made a, I made a note about that. Like, it's like wrestling boobs, Abbott, Costello, yeah. dialogue, zombies, and a blooper reel at the end. It's fucking amazing. And the oh, wrestler, yeah. <laughs> the wrestler, her name was Queen Kong. She was, only, yeah. she was a glow girl. Yeah, and the movie she actually she's wrote the Gorgo, theme song right? for the glow uh, TV yeah. show. Yeah, she did a great job. That that scene's brilliant. I love that wrestling scene. Yeah, it's <laughs> fucking you great. Would. And it goes on for a long it time. It does go on a little too long. But I like the hero on this one. Like I said, it's more likable. He doesn't really do any like extremely brutal shit or unnecessary shit. I'm like 
every movie we watched prior or mentioned yeah. prior to this. I mean, they do everything except for say a dude. It's so Valley. Everyone is so California. Oh yeah, the, the hairstyles are Aquanet the fuck. That's what I was going to get to was with it this. Tony Naples is the, uh, the, the, the the villain, not the main main villain, but she's like the the underling. Who is the main, uh, like, yeah. his, his henchman? Yes. They turned it fun in a good way, unlike when Beastmaster 2 tried to become fun and do like the same, very similar thing of making it more like slapsticky and everyone's talking like they're from the 80s, even though we're like in the, yeah. whenever the fuck we're supposed to be. <laughs> one, one thing I forgot is, was it Deathstalker 1 or Deathstalker 2? I think it was Might part have been four. one. No, I think it was part one where it was part one. The wizard turns his like assassin into the lady. And then he goes oh, yeah. into the room yeah. with the guy with the, with your fucking hero, and he's being rapey. And I'm just like, that's the right. That's what I was talking about. Yeah, yeah. And then the, he talks, and he's like, get out of here. Yeah, but well, that, yeah, that's the one he's you like, forgot to mention. You got to forget mention that was that, the wizard that was a, it. that yeah. was an assassin. That was a dude, and he was he was curious at first, I think, but then he was not curious. No, 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 no. Could you imagine being an assassin? You're like, I'm gonna come in as a pretty lady. I'm gonna get this guy, and the dude's like, I'm gonna rape you. You're like, I want to be normal again. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Turn me I, back. I changed wizard, my mind. Wizard. <laughs> That'd be uh, weird. What yeah. if he went through with it? And he had to come out of that room, explain that shit to the wizard. Did like, you kill him? Uh, Actually, <laughs> yeah. <I'm> pregnant. <laughs> I think the first thing he does when he turns into a woman is to start filling himself yeah. up. Yeah, I remember uh, that. You're uh, right. It is that scene. It is part yeah. one. I Holy thought shit. he was supposed to be a hero. Yeah. What the fuck? <laughs> God. Death Stalker too, everyone. Going back a little bit. I didn't know he was a police officer. Oh, shit. Oh, he was oh, a real hero. Stalker one, sorry. Uh, so going back a little we're bit. We're all over we're, the place. I know we are, yeah. but we can go back a little bit. Fire and Ice, another Ralph Bakshi movie. Oh, yeah, same year, I think. Oh, 83. 83. Everyone's looking at me. <laughs> sorry, I was just like, I was yeah, just drinking right away for you guys to talk about Fire and Ice. Yeah. I've known, I've seen it once as a child. It's so a I fantasy movie, and it's a cartoon, right? Style. Yeah, it's the same thing. They filmed the fil- they filmed all the actors, and they went back and rotoscoped them in. Um, this was the this was a Frazetta film. Like he helped yeah. uh, do all this, you know, design all the people. I think it's the first uh, appearance of um, like Leopard Man or whatever his name is. The damn it, what's his dark dark leopard guy? What the hell's his name, everybody? Dark leopard. Yeah, I can't remember his name. <laughs> he's, the, he's the heroes. Like, he finds him on the road. Fuck. Oh, God, I can't remember, Steve. Okay. I haven't seen this in a while. Oh, shit. Okay, you put it on the list, so I thought we were going to talk I about it. I know. I was going to watch it, but I never got a chance You didn't to. fucking watch what you put on the list? <laughs> I, I'm a horrible person. I, 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 was, got... I was too busy watching a, bu- a bunch of these movies, and I didn't get to it. And I was like, I'll just remember it, and now I'm just drawing a total blank. So we'll just skip on the one I did you watch. You got a laptop. Crawl. Crawl. Crawl, <laughs> man. Crawl. Crawl. Another Look. Glaive movie like Beastmaster, by yeah. the way. Wasn't Crawl supposed to be something right? else, though? Isn't, isn't that the one that was supposed to be like a different movie? And uh, they... Return of the Jedi Part 2. Was that it? Right? No, I don't. I don't know. Oh. Fuck. I, I could Everyone, I always, think, I always think people are ripping off Star Wars. And that's what they kind of are. Everyone all does. these movies have like the force or a power that the main guy has. Like in, the, in Hawk, in this film, they have like where they can retrieve their weapons like the force. Yeah, well, but this never... movie was a fucking bomb. Nobody went to go see it. People hated it. Didn't most of these bomb? Uh, Hawk relative- was the one that made the most money. Then yeah. Conan hit, and we were like, oh, we can do this. And it's like, no, man. Relatively, we can't. a lot of those early ones, like Clash of the Titans, Excalibur, Dragon Slayer, they made money. Yeah. They didn't, they didn't, they at least made their money back. This yeah, one, they were not successful. This though. one was not successful at all. Yeah. They were probably made for like $4. Well, this one was made for like $30 million and it made like $16 million. So it made a little over That's half good. of its budget. But it had a bigger cast, too. I mean, you've got, um, you know, Liam Neeson was in it. Um, you know, there, there's, uh, oh, God damn it. I can't remember the guy's name. Bernard Breslau played the Cyclops in this film and he Thank was you. the giant in Hawk the Slayer. That's all I, I just looked up, Carl, just so I could see that. I've seen this cover before. It's a great, uh, it's almost like a science fiction fantasy sword sorcery film where, uh, the heroine gets kidnapped by the monster who wants her, wants her. So he has to, they're, they're actually getting married to band like the, the universe together or some bullshit. And he has to go on a quest to collect people to find this castle that just keeps disappearing. So they have to go on a quest to find the location. And then while he's doing that, he's, he's collecting his merry men, which Liam Neeson's a part of. I mean, it looks very sci-fi. Yeah. There's a lot of, Robbie I mean, it's, it's kind of an all-star cast for, uh, for English actors too. Yeah. Crazy. Uh, great special effects. They spent a lot of money on this movie, actually, and it bombed. Oh, they fucked up badly. It did. Yes, because they have a slug monster in it. <laughs> That's why they spent all the money. <laughs> they spent all the money on that slug monster that 
Ooh, it opened. It yeah, budget twenty seven to thirty million. It made sixteen point yeah. nine. Right, million. and what? What? Eighty seven. When did this come out? Eighty three. Holy crap! So that was a lot of money. There's no way that was going to make it back. I don't know what they were thinking. <laughs> yeah. See, like, and it, you, you can go on with uh, some of these. Like, I did enjoy this movie. I remember, you know, like really wanting a boomerang because I saw this movie. Me too. Guess I got what? the Nerf one. Didn't work. Nope. Didn't work. Never it, worked. It hit me in the face too many times. Well, you know, it did work. Legend. 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 I didn't know if we were going to talk about that because it definitely. Crow was... came out the same uh, month as Star Wars, by the way, Return of the Jedi. Oh, that was a bad idea. D- oh, that's probably why I got killed. So if it's you like look, the ET curse. If you look at what all came out that month, it was Staying Alive. Can't fuck with that. Travolta? Come on. Star Wars, Return of the Jedi, Trading Places, Jaws 3D, Superman 3, Porky's 2, War Games, Octopussy, oh. Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, Twilight Zone the movie, Flashdance. Yeah, how the fuck are you going to... That was that month? Yeah. God, it, it did better than Mr. Mom and Private School. And Tootsie. It did better than Tootsie. Well, I thought the Tootsie was a huge hit, but I guess I was wrong. Well, well maybe, maybe maybe it had a lower budget than fucking Crow. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. Maybe they weren't like, hey, we need fucking lasers and Liam Neeson. We, we just need a wig and lipstick for yeah, Dustin lipstick Hoffman. Here we go. <laughs> I thought Mr. Mum was a hit, but see what the fuck I know. Yeah, damn it, Keaton. Why couldn't you pull it out, man? Fuck. Hey, you got Batman from it. There's a whole bunch of movies we can talk about. Hundra was one of the few sword and sorcery movies where the the it's a female lead. Uh, Krull, we just talked about Ator, Warrior and Sorceress, Barbarian Queen, Lady Hawk, Legend. We got to talk about Legend. Fuck it. Legend. We got to talk about Legend. Rob Fuck Oteen's, it. A, spe- a, fe- a special effects just blew my mind as a child <laughs> watching this movie with the goblins in darkness. Tim Curry. I mean, if you don't know Legend, you, what the fuck? It yeah. A Tangerine Dream soundtrack. I prefer that over. I know it's controversial. It's I think you and I agree, actually. Yeah, right? We absolutely agree on this. The, the original soundtrack's better than the one that they put on the, the extended cut. I yeah. spent most of my life getting Legend and Willow mixed up. You should. No, I'm joking. Just, you know, so Willow's, uh, Willow's on the Willow list. Willow is on the list down there. It's just a weird thing. It's like I said, it's not my like genre. I, I just kind of poke in every now and then, take a look at things. But yeah. yeah, Willow and Legend, I feel like they were always on TV when I was young and always getting mixed up. But. The extended version for Legend is way better. How long can that fucking be? It's uh, about a half an hour longer. It seems like when you actually get the so all the all the cuts long. together, uh, it's, it it's just has so many long. better. Th- it has I, exp- besides the uh, the music, I don't. I do prefer the Tangerine Dream soundtrack over Jerry Goldsmith's uh, score. score yeah. But uh, I mean, it's there's there's longer parts of like there's there's more violence, there's more goblins, there's more everything, uh, and it seems like a little less Tom Cruise, which is okay too. Anything. I'm just saying. Yeah, I, I, I agree with that. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that movie was really good. I really enjoyed the uh, special effects. You know, it's it was it was it, it was one that I remember seeing as a kid. That it was like, oh, this is this is amazing. Yeah. That was probably one of the, the the first ones that I saw because you know I was like five when that movie came out. You were, oh, yeah. you were like what, like eighteen, nineteen? Shut your mouth. <laughs> And this yeah. whole genre pretty much dies at the end of the eighties, right? It's just, uh, it's just like it like still. died. I mean, with, you're forgetting like, Dungeons like, and Dragons, man. Like Grudge killed it too, right? <laughs> Kurt Cobain also killed this genre. Oh God, yeah, you probably did. I think Army of Darkness killed it because that movie bombed, and it's not. Yeah, as good as <laughs> but I mean, were, were all these even getting theatrical runs? That the Barbarians actually come out the fucking movies? Did anybody actually go back and watch that movie? Was wait, are with the, the twins? Barbarians of the Twins? Yeah, I could, yeah, I couldn't find it. Yeah, it's a tough one. It's I tough wanted to find yeah, it. Yeah, no, I didn't go back and watch it. Uh, it's on YouTube. That was a huge bomb. I mean, it, it, by that time, I think uh, wrestling had had its peak. You're yep. talking about grunge coming in. People were getting more serious, and these movies are not serious. Well, big sweaty, like roided out dudes were kind of dying down. Even with WWF at the time, you're coming to like. Hulkamania slowly dying. I mean, that shit, Hulkamania was dead by like 93 pretty much. And then he went to WCW and it became a bad guy. It was, so a lot of those like big sweaty dude things. At this yeah. point, like you got Bret Hart coming through in the early 90s and Shawn Michaels. People were getting burned like, the too. more normal looking dudes. Oh, even, yeah. Even, oh, yeah. Even, even, even if you get the Van Damme. But it's coming the, out. The, the Van Damme of the, the 80s. World, it's, it's, it, the Bruce the, Willis character. I think that might be, you have a good point there. The martial arts film started taking over too in the mid to late 80s. And at right. the end of the 80s, you get, you get well, you, you get burned by fucking Masters of the Universe, okay? Masters of the yeah. Universe, but you had uh, Bred Sonia in 85. Yeah, great. So yeah. That, was a, that was a female lead. And you know you go to from that not get, Conan wink wink yeah you get <laughs> yes it is <laughs> you get you get to Willow I mean Willow is Willow did not make money it did well I mean it, it, yeah. not over the budget but, and the marketing it did not make it wasn't a big hit but it's coming back oh yeah it is it's coming back it's one of those films that people go back and go oh it wasn't that bad it's like I never thought it was bad it's I remember, a fantastic movie I specifically remember renting Willow and uh, we we rented the VHS and went home. 
and my parents ordered a Papa John's pizza, and I never had one before. Oh, back in they were actually decent? Yeah, <laughs> in 88. <laughs> so, oh, yeah. 89. So, better pizza, better, so, better ingredients. So I remember that day very specifically because it was, you know, like I said, you know, I'm... I was really into this genre, yeah. and it, yeah. these movies helped me find other movies, such as, you know, I saw that before I saw Beastmaster, before, before I saw Conan. I know I saw Beastmaster before that. Yeah. But, um, yeah, you, then you go sort of into the, the 90s from there. We've got Army Darkness, Cull, and the 13th Warrior are the only ones that stand out to me. Maybe 13th. it's Cull. Cull's the one that's supposed to be that's something uh, else. Kevin Sorbo. <sighs> You want to talk about Kevin Sorbo? Nope. <laughs> I uh, recently found out that Kevin Sorbo is an asshole. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, I, I was... That kind of bummed me out because I loved uh, uh, Hercules Zeno. Like, it's funny because like the movie's made to die, but TV, you know, the uh, the Renaissance pictures blew up with you know Zena movie or Zena TV shows and mini and mini series and you know the the uh, the Conan not the Conan actually Conan did have a television show that did okay. The the Beastmaster TV show had three seasons. That's pretty fucking good actually. Beastman. Yeah, that's what it is. So Cole was originally supposed to be Conan three, so it's it's a, a adaptation of Howard's Conan novel, The Hour of the Dragon. Yeah, Cole is actually one of his characters that's, too. Yeah, yeah, I think it actually was before Conan. The character was created before Conan. Well, the film was originally intended to be the third Conan film, Conan the Conqueror. No, oh, wow. I got it mixed up with Crawl. See, I fucking know things. Crawl and Call. I could see that. I yeah, could see that. Yeah, I just you know, IMBD, IMDb. It's all the same. I never well, IBDB. Never, y'all didn't know fucking shit. So get out of here with that. See, but yeah. <laughs> so so the other one you have listed up there, Thirteenth Warrior. Excellent film, yeah. Antonio Banderas. Uh, more uh, seated in reality too. It is, it is, and um, you know, it was. It had a it had sort of a uh, like a, a, a Beowulf kind of thing mythical yeah. feeling to it, but it was all based in reality. And they sort of explained to you why these things are happening. If you haven't yeah. seen it, check it out. It's great. Uh, I can't remember. It's based off the book called Age of the Dead, <clears> which was a big thing in Fangoria, and that's how I heard about it. And then when they made the film, they toned it down and changed it slightly. But it it is. Uh, uh, it was God who wrote that? I forgot. Anyways, his version of Beowulf is somebody challenged it to. He's like, I can Michael write Crichton. That. Yeah, there you go. Uh, Jurassic Park and Michael Crichton, and that's Thirteenth Warrior, and it's fucking great. I just remember uh, after after watching it, I was like, the guy that always called him little brother. I was like, has that guy ever been in anything else? And I found out he's just like a Norwegian soap opera star. Oh, what a bummer! Because yeah. he's fantastic. He was, he was great it. in the movie, but all he does is soap operas. Yeah. So. Good money. Yeah, that is a, good money. I like it because the Arab is the actual one who's the intelligent one who has has math and writing, and then you go and he goes to another country to meet other people. And the Northmen are just like witchcraft. <laughs> he's like, oh shit, these guys are dumb. <laughs> they're they're washing their shit in their own snot, <laughs> passing the bowl around. Oh, the Thirteenth Warrior. Oh man, uh, I, there were there were there were movies that came after that, but this is when the the genre sort of started to die. Even though there were attempts to make other movies, uh, like they finally made a Dungeons and Dragons movie in the year two thousand. I wanted that to be and so it was good, so fucking bad. So Brilliant. Jeremy Jeremy Irons <laughs> Jeremy Irons overacted the shit out of that. You can tell he didn't want to be there. He just wanted to. But isn't paycheck. all these movies overacting? Yeah, but come on. No, man. he changed. Not so all of them. I, I bet if you saw Dungeons and Dragons when you were like seven, you would have a different thought That's process Derek, about it. Is that what you saw it? Well, no, I hated it. Okay, I didn't know you. Were but going I didn't with like this. I didn't like a lot of these movies when I was a kid. But I think like when you compare them, you look at Dungeons and Dragons and you look at fucking Beastmaster. Which you'll spend seven seventy five dollars for a fucking it Blu-ray. It keeps going up. <laughs> oh no shit! I should have yeah. bought it. <clears throat> well, come on. Th- it, it, comparing the two is just not even let's, close. Let's take a child and put them in a room. All right, fucking Beastmaster had had animals and uh, Dungeons and Dragons had uh, Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> no. so they both pay off. Then what's the they problem? also did the uh, Where, dun- where's the argument? Uie Bull, Uie Bull did oh, the Dungeon God, Siege God. movie, yeah, which is did. you know. Those games are a blast. If you were into those, like going back to those NES titles like Gauntlet and shit, it's very similar and D and D based. And that movie was also dog shit. Probably worse than Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah, it, this is a great genre. Damn it, it is because, a good genre. Besides what Derek thinks, <laughs> and, and for, for, <laughs> no. for, for 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 people like, I just like me to talk growing shit up, sometimes. Oh yeah, it's fantastic. It's what, some of this shit is completely warranted to some talk it, shit. Yeah, some about. of it's awful, but. Growing up, like I said, you didn't get things like this. The only way I could get, yeah. you know, a movie like Clash of the Titans or anything I like that. I love Clash of the Titans. Only, only way different. I could get any of these movies was if I, you know, read a book, you know, because I wasn't able to. Or roll the dice. Yeah. And or or play D&D dungeon. with yeah. friends. And, that's what I did. You know, it was always fun when you would find one. And that's how I found Hawk the Slayer. Well, they were churning these out like crazy. I though. found Hawk the Slayer by watching it with, with uh, 
group of people to play Dungeons and Dragons yeah. with. And then we made characters like from Hawk exactly. Yeah, I did yeah, the exactly same thing. Like it, I did that. My issue is just it, they all tell the same story over and over and over. Well, yeah, that's my main problem with it. it's like it's always the same thing. It's either you're fighting over a woman, your fucking brother's evil, Beastmaster two. <laughs> like they all kind of just repeat the same stories. I think Beastmaster but, genre, Beastmaster which is 2 fine. Went to the future, right? Single hero, yeah, it's a, so romance, it, and magic. Yeah, Beastmaster two. They go to the fu- <laughs> well. It's the time portal. Oh yeah, that's right. So, but they don't even go to the future until like. An hour into it, almost is when the portals open. That's why he's upset. And, and <laughs> yeah, and then it's revealed that. The well, main, it's in the title, so I guess that'd be too. You know. Yeah, I'm they find saying. out that it's his brother. No, I just don't like Beastmaster. What's my notes on Beastmaster too? Let's go through this real quick because I know we're winding down. But let's no, we are it. winding down. And the genre goes from like say the Lou yeah. Ferrigno Hercules to like yeah. Rutger Hauer and Lady Hawk. That's yeah. two different. It's the same genre, but they're so different in style yeah. and filmmaking and acting. Well, I feel like what year was? Did you write down what year Beastmaster Two was? Fuck, I don't think I even put it on the board. Man. Yeah. Well, <laughs> okay, I do okay. feel like by Beastmaster the time, Two was ninety one. Okay. So yeah. So I think about like that late eighties time. A lot of these movies were like spoofing themselves and being like way more lighthearted than oh, like yeah. Deathstalker One or the ones that we said are fucking gross and rapey and horrible. I think they try to lighten it up a little bit. Maybe someone in the Make studios were like, "Hey guys, this is fucking creepy. We're making heroes that are like pieces of shit." Beastmaster 2, the only notes I have for it. <laughs> oh, I can't wait to hear it. it. It's set 10 years later. Governor's daughter goes through portal. So that's what causes it. She's like cruising in her car and like some witch opens a portal. She goes through the portal. She ends up in these old times. Yeah. But she doesn't act that shocked about it. She acts like she's in like some weird part of California. Yeah. Then she runs into the Beastmaster's tiger at first. And she's like, oh, there's a tiger. Get panther. it away from me. It's a puppy. Yeah, I like, forgot. Leopard, panther, yeah. whatever the fuck that thing's <laughs> but, supposed to be. But she doesn't. Well, it's full tiger. Black it's face tiger. Oh, okay. No, this is right. full this tiger in this one. Yeah. Yeah. It's a black face tiger. No, I just realized. A, yes. I'm, I'm really upset. Yeah. <laughs> ah, fuck. But no, this is like full. <laughs> this is full fucking regular ass tiger. But she runs into it. She's like casually afraid. Like, oh, no, get away. But then like Beastmaster shows up and the ferrets come out of his bag and she flips the fuck out over ferrets. I'm like, that didn't bug you? Like the tiger? But the fucking, she's like, they're rats. They're fucking rats. Get the Kodo, rats Kodo, away. man. Stick yeah. With. You think they got those from Joe Exotic? Those tigers? No, oh, God. Then? Yeah. I guess I it's would, possible. Yeah, I don't know how long he's been around. Yeah. But then after that, you know, that they bitch. they just go back and forth from these portals <laughs> from the future, and Dr. Phil's trying to hunt them. Dr. Phil, Uncle Phil from Fresh Prince of Bel-Air is trying to hunt them <laughs> down. Not Dr. Phil. That'd be a way different movie. Oh, my God. It's, it's not good. Let's but, talk about things. But Beastmaster 2 is one of them that, like, 34 year old me is like this is so fucking dumb but i guarantee you seven year old me would love it yeah because it's so fucking stupid you know and and that's the thing you know kids will love a lot of these movies some of them they obviously shouldn't be watching shouldn't be watching death stalker or well a tour if it's directed by fulci and it's sweaty dudes but i probably shouldn't watch it yeah but a lot but uh, that this genre has had its day again and i think it's sort of fallen off the wayside again I think it's I think it's I think it's gone. But there's a new Lord of the Rings series, so yeah, we didn't want to touch on Lord of the Rings because I don't we'll want talk Derek, about it. I don't want Derek to leave. And Lord uh, of the Rings and Game <laughs> of Thrones, all this. I don't want to talk about Game of Thrones. So, well, I, I, know, I was going to bring those up, were like, things it has that made a, a resurgence because people are they want it now. It's weird, but they want it a mainstream. certain way. It's weird that something like Game of Thrones became so fucking mainstream. Vikings, man, all that sh- kind of shit stuff. like this is always considered nerdy, nerd shit. Yeah. So the fact that Game of Thrones became like this huge hit, like always blew my fucking mind. Well, a lot of militia guys probably like it. Yeah, that's that's <laughs> fucking true. Well, they can like it because the horrible things happened to yeah. all the bad people. On right, that show. and that, even think about people. that though. During the eighties, you had this buff, toxic masculinity bullshit, and then you towards the end, you're gonna it, everything kind of exploded or imploded on itself, and then. Yeah. Kurt well, Cobain took away our uh, Sword and Sorcery movies. It's never went away in video game form, though. It's evolved, and it's still hugely popular, yeah. whether it's like the Diablo series, Baldur's Gate, Dungeon Siege. Well, Dungeons and Dragons became yeah. RPG on you know consoles. Well, and yeah, well, all these phone, games are so. pretty much based off like Dungeons and Dragons. Absolutely. Play. And, I mean, there's 20 games every year that follow that dungeon crawler dynamic, so it never died there. It's, it's only gotten bigger, actually. Yes. And, like I mean, the Elder Scrolls, shit oh, like yeah. that, like the biggest games out there, you know. But in movie form, they tried that with the World of Warcraft They're, movie. These are expensive. Oh yeah, movies. that's bad. To yeah. do them right, unless it's got like a sci-fi movie yeah. or uh, whatever, yeah. they cost a lot of fucking money. They do. That's and why it's a gamble. It, it, it is a gamble, but there are surefire things that will make money. That's why, like I said, Lord of the Rings, the new show, Amazon put a billion dollars into it. Jesus, for one season. Me. But it's got the name. 
Exactly. It's got a name. It's established. Good point. If Take they made that same show mm-hmm. and don't call it Lord of the Rings, how well does it do? Mm. Well, you, you don't pay for the Lord of the G-Strings. Okay. okay. I know. I'm just saying. I forgot they, about they, those. Dildo Sagans. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, God damn it. If it's just called wi- Wizards and Little People or whatever, like, what are you- <laughs> Wizards of Little People and Walking. Oh, my God. Yeah, there you I go. think we're going to wrap this up, guys. That was called Mr. Wizard. It came on Nickelodeon back in the day. Oh, shit. Dave, do your normal ending part where you're asking us what our favorite fucking piece of shit movie is. Yeah. I always do. <laughs> Whoever. All right. Steve, what's uh, your favorite piece of shit sword and sorcery movie? Oh, fuck. I got, okay. Pick one. I will. I'm going to go. I, I, I'm going to sidestep Conan and Legend and all the obvious ones. Dragon Slayer was the one as a kid. Blew my mind. As you said, the special effects, the acting, uh, it, it just all together, and it was something I watched on tele- television, you know, late night yeah. or even at noon. It was weird. It was like, what the fuck? And the dragon was amazing. And they never really have recaptured that until, uh, sorry, Game of Thrones. Yeah. They didn't capture a really good dragon. You don't got to apologize to me. You apologize to Dave. I'm sorry. I was going to say the same thing, but since you said that, I'll, oh, just, shit. I'll just say Willow because <laughs> that movie was amazing. It was yeah, amazing it when I saw it. I was I was very young. Another I great was, dragon, by the way. Another great dragon. Two head yeah. two headed dragon yeah. that that blew itself up. <laughs> and then there was a little there was the the troll slash yeah. little they're trolls. Neanderthal thing. Yeah, they're trolls. He threw an acorn at it. It was great. I'm gonna go ahead Steps and pick and troll shit. I'm gonna pick for Derek. Uh Derek is uh, Beastmaster too. Yeah, fuck it. <laughs> Jesus Christ. He no. doesn't like any of these. No, I mean, honestly, it'd be what we didn't even talk about. It's the Masters of the Universe fucking TV series. Yeah, I just put it down as He Man. Yeah, for me, it's Masters of the Universe, the cartoon in general. Like, I grew up on that shit and I was obsessed with it. Still am. Still have all the toys. Still search Walmarts every other day. We were just talking yeah, about Yeah, because they've redone those, figures. Yeah. yeah, they're putting them out again, making them a little nicer. But they've done that, like, I don't know, that's like the 10th time. The last cartoon excited, they put yeah. out was really good. Yeah, now Kevin Smith is coming out with one for Netflix. So Holy we'll see how that shit. goes. Yeah. So that's what I want to say. Masters be... of the Universe. And fuck yeah, Dolph Lundgren, fuck you guys. That's a good movie. That is good. Whatever. It's a good fun. piece of shit. We should go movie. into it now, but we don't have time. No, <laughs> we don't have that type of time. All right. Well, let's get us out of here, Dave. You want to do the old ramble ramble? Yeah, sure. Uh, you can catch us on... Anchor FM, Breaker, Google Podcast, Overcast, Pocket Cast, Radio Public, Spotify, Apple Podcast. Did you write that twice? Castbox, uh, Louisville Mojo, <laughs> <laughs> MySpace. <God>. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you can find us on uh, YouTube. Like, yes. share, and subscribe. Please. Check out our Facebook page. We post stuff there every so often, and we're going to have some contests coming up soon. So oh, that's right. Yeah, we'll uh, talk about that more. So. Take it away, Steve. We're out of here, guys. Yeah, download us on LimeWire or Kazaa. Oh, my God. Bye. Bye. Go, Clark.